Hello, lovely children. You are welcome to another lesson in mathematics. We are still on number operations. And then today, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to use concrete representation to explain division. You should be able to use concrete representation to explain division as repeated subtraction as repeated subtraction and the inverse of multiplication so today we are going to look at division and then we have to find answers for division using repeated subtractions and the inverse of multiplication so that is what we are about to do today in our previous lesson we looked at ways or method of methods of solving for multiplication sentences we looked at the use of the number line and then the use of the rectangular arrays that's the vertical lines and the horizontal lines in finding answers to our multiplication sentences today we are moving on to division we are moving on to division and then we are going to use two methods that can make us have the answers to our division sentences. That's the repeated subtraction and the inverse of multiplication. Good. So we move on to our keywords for today. The first keyword we have is division. Division. Division is the method of giving a group of things into equal parts. So it is the method of giving group of things into equal parts that is division so when you have groups equal groups they should all have the same things when you are what sharing they should be what equal they should be equal so that is our key word for today good now let us move on to what we are about to do today today we are looking at division So we have division. What sign do we use in division? So this is the sign we use for division. And then an example of a division sentence is having something like this. So 4 divided by 2. It means that you have 4 items. You have 4 items or sticks and then you are sharing it among two people so we have two human beings here so in this case both of them should have equal sticks that is the principle of division the groups should have equal parts so we take the first stick, we give it to this human being. The second stick goes to this one. The third one will go to the first one. And then this last one will go to the second human being. So we, we realize that they both have what equal parts. The first person has what two sticks, and then the second person is having what two sticks. So 4 divided by 2, we can say that it is what? 2. Because when we shared the 4 sticks among the 2 people, they both had 2. So that is about division. Good. So let us use the repeated subtraction in finding answers for our division sentence. Good. So I have 12 items. So 12 straws. And then I want to share it among three people. Good. So the groups are what? The three people. And then the total number of things that I'm sharing are what? 12 straws. 
two. So in the repeated subtraction, we are going to take the straws one after the other and then share it among the three people. So that is the repeated subtraction. It means that we are taking out from the total number of straws. So let us draw our straws. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have twelve straws, and then we have three people. So we have group one, group two, and then group three. Good. So we are sharing the 12 straws among these three groups of people. In repeated subtraction, we are taking the first straw. It means we are taking one out of the total number of straws and then give it to the first person. We are taking another one out from the 12 straws and then we we'll give it to the next person. Another straw will go out and then it is given to the third person. So that is what subtraction, taking out. That is repeated subtraction. So right now we have taken three out. We need to repeat the process till they, they all have the same straws. So we continue, we are taking another straw for the first person, another straw for the second person, another straw for the third person. We need to repeat it again because we have straws left. So another straw for the first person again, another straw is taken out for the second person, another straw is taken out for the third person. We need to repeat it again. So we are taking another straw out and then we we'll give it to the first person. This straw will go to the second person. And then the last straw will go to the third person. So right now we are taking all the straws out. And then we have shared it equally among the three groups of people. So let us look at the number of straws each member has. So we have one, two, three, four. So this person is having four straws. One, two, three, four. Four here. And then one, two, three, four. Another four. So they all have equal straws. Therefore, 12 divided by 3 will give us. Four. It means that when three people are sharing 12 items, they will both get four each. Okay, children, let us look at another example. So I have 15 oranges. And then five people are to share the 15 oranges. So five people. We are going to use the repeated subtraction in finding the answer for our division sentence, which is 15 divided by 5. So 15 oranges, 5 people sharing the oranges. So I have my 5 people. 1, 2, 3, and then five. Good. So I have my 15 oranges here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Good. So we are going to use the repeated subtraction as I said. 
So with the repeated sub subtraction, we are taking out the oranges one after the other and then share it among the people we have on the board. So the first orange will go off for this person. The second one will go out for the second person. The third one for the third person. The fourth one for the fifth per uh, fourth person. And then the fifth orange for the fifth person. We still have oranges left. So we are going to take out the oranges and then share it among them. So we continue with the repeated subtraction. So one orange will go for the first person, another one for this, another for the third person. So this one will go for the fourth person, and then this for the fifth person. Now we we'll continue this for the third for the first person. This one for the second person. This for the third person. This for the fourth person. And then the last one for the fifth person. So we've exhausted or we've taken out all the oranges and then we shared it among the five people. Now let us count and then check how many they all had. So the first person had one, two, three. So three oranges. One, two, three. Another three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. So when five people are sharing 15 items, they will all have three each. So this is how we use the repeated subtraction in division. Good. So we move on to the other method, which is the inverse of multiplication. It's the inverse multiplication. So inverse. So we have the inverse multiplication. It means the opposite of something. So we have an example by 12 divided by 3. So when three people are sharing 12 items, what will they have all together? So with this, we take the second number which is the 3. So 3 times what will give us the first number. So instead of using the repeated subtraction to find the answer, we can use the inverse multiplication to find the answer as well. So we don't know the answer for 12 divided by 3. So in that case, we are taking the second number, which is the 3, multiply it by a number we don't know to get our first number. So 3 times 12 will give us 12. Now let us look at the timetable. So 3 times 1, we have 3. 3 times 2 will give us 6. 3 times 3 will give us 9. 3 times 4 we have what? 12. So we have an answer here. So 3 times 4 will give us 12. Therefore, 12 divided by 3 will give us 4. Which means that when 3 people are sharing 12 items, they will all have 4 each. Good. Let us look at another example. Using the inverse multiplication, let us find the answer for 20 divided by 4. So 20 divided by 4, we don't know the answer. So with the inverse multiplication, we have to take the second number, which is the 4. So 4 times what number 
will give us the first number which is 20. So in this case, we need to take our 4 times table. We have 4 times 1 will give us 4. 4 times 2, 8. 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 4 will give us 16. And then 4 times 5 will give us 20. So there we have an answer. So 4 times 5 will give us 20. Therefore, 20 divided by 4 will be 5. So 4 times 5 will give us 20. Yes, the last example. Let us solve 21 divided by 7. So we are still using the inverse multiplication. What do we have to do? Yes, we take the second number, which is the 7, and then multiply it by an unknown number to get the first number, which is the 21. So in this case, we need to take our times table. So 7 times 1, we have 7. 7 times 2, 14. 7 times 3, we have 21. So there we have an answer. So 7 times 3 will give us 21. Therefore, 21 divided by 7 will be 3. Okay, children, what have we learned so far? Today we looked at division and then we looked at ways or methods of solving for division sentences. We used the repeated subtraction and then we used the inverse multiplication. So with the repeated subtraction, we take out the total or the number of items and then share it among the number of people that we have. And the inverse multiplication, we look at the second number, we take the second number, multiply it by an unknown number to get the first number. So that is how we solve or find answers for division sentences. I'll see you on Zoom so that we have more discussion on how to solve division sentences. Be good children, I'll come your way again. Bye bye for now.